Okay, this is just going to be a test of some equations. I'm going to project them on my screen, but then I'm going to change them uh, and draw them. So here we go. Let's try this again. This is a paper that we started reviewing and mostly we were going through all of the parameters that go into the development of a force but in particular I wanted to make sure that we could follow equation by equation so this time around I'm going to use my this paper and I'm going to draw the equation so for this force field the universal force field this is the the main equation for the force field e the energy it's going to be the sum of er which is the bond stretch energy e theta which is the angle uh, energy e phi which is probably the torsional energy e omega uh, that they called something like transition no, not transition but um, an energy that describes changes that occurred in bonds when they are really distorted well I'll, I'll look up the the name in a second then the van der Waals energy and finally the electrostatic energy those are all of the terms. Each one of these terms uh, is in turn defined in different fashions. This is the ER in the simplest form, although there's an alternative to use the Morse potential instead of this harmonic oscillation oscillator. And of course there is the, we could call it a soft sub-definition of what defines the distance, the standard distance between atoms this is a classical additive force field everything adds up and what doesn't has exponentials so the bond radii that's the, the R I J I'm going to stick to the main parameters, um, so I'm going to follow with P theta. This is a capital K, and because this one relates to angle bends, that is, angles require three points, whereas for a bond you only need an atom and another atom, for bonds we're going to need one atom two and three so that the angle is defined between those and this one takes this form a cosine then uh, yeah sorry I'm, I'm just following in the paper if you want to see, see it's it over here, here. Then we have the torsion, which is E5, another K, another four constant, force constant, but this one involves four atoms. That's what we require to have dihedrals. It has a very similar form to the one for the angle bends. Then we have one, two, three terms. The fourth, E omega, it's, a, it's also a similar equation in the sense that it contains cosines, but it's a little bit bigger. It also involves dihedral angles, that is, the, we could call it the bonded interactions between 
four atoms. And as you can see, this is a, a Fourier expansion. And then, so we are up all the way up to here. Let's change the page. The bundle valves, it's a little, in a way, it's simpler than all of this previous one. And of course, we can refer to the paper to look for these uh, constants. In this case, the C, C0, C1, and C2 for the omega energy, and C6 for this uh, van der Waals energy. So in this case, C6 is a, re a dispersive attractive term that has its own equations to be integrated. We're missing just the electrostatic term and for that mm -hmm, here we are. So I'm taking it from, from this page. page. It's, it's right, right there under F, F uh, equation, equation 43. 43. This is a pairwise term, that is the charges of two neighboring atoms. And that's it. So here we have the charges in the electron units. R is the distance in Armstrong's and E the, the electric constant. Um, the default dielectric constant in UFF calculations is 1, which will mean almost uh, very close to vacuum. And there's uh, the, car the charges. These are obtained from another uh, paper, for another so-called equi charge equilibration scheme called QEQ. So as you can see, we can have a very basic description of all of these equations right here on paper, the different terms for different parts of the uh, well, of the force field. There's, of course, many things that still we need to look into. For example, where is this force constant obtained and this is standard distance, for example, as described here. In the case of this omega, as well as this phi down here, and W over here and over here. And, of course, all of them can be more complex terms same goes for this function and this in a way is the simplest however we don't know why this uh, uh, constant here at the beginning it has no dimensions so it must be something maybe from a logarithm but this is the magnitude it has let's uh, well uh, we are not gonna review this but we can probably take a look at how Avogadro does these calculations and if they make sense according to what is also published in the paper but for now, this is the whole test I wanted to do. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy it and you can use it.